What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. I am recording this on Tuesday, November 4th, 2025. What happened to Polkadot? What happened to Polkadot, guys? I mean, if you're like me and you're a nerd, you kind of was super excited about Polkadot. It was a very unique chain. It offered a very unique solution. Uh, their technology felt empowering to developers like myself. So what the hell happened to it? Like, I feel like Polkadot is slowly just rotting away and no one is saying anything about it. Uh, like, we all know Polkadot is silently failing, but like nobody wants to say it out loud. So I kind of have to be that guy that like points it out. Like, uh, what happened? Before we can answer that question, we kind of have to look at the past a little bit and explain to Polkadot to people who perhaps are not too familiar with the chain. Uh, Polkadot was uh, released in May 2020, I believe. And um, uh, its main net was released in May 2020. And its first parachain, its parachain rollout was released, I believe, in December 2021. So Polkadot experienced full deployment in 2021. And what they offered to the game was very unique. Uh, they basically said, hey, uh, we're offering you two special things. First, rather than deploy on someone else's blockchain, build your own blockchain, right? Which was super cool. Build your own blockchain. Don't deploy on someone else's chain. Build your own blockchain. And the second thing they promised was interoperability. Basically, blockchains can talk to each other very easily. It's, it, there's no longer like a siloed walls um, uh, with each blockchain because like early on in the game each blockchain was like a silo right each blockchain was like a walled garden and Polkadot was the first to come out and say hey these blockchain networks need to talk to each other and not be like you know walled gardens so interoperability and build your own blockchain was the two thing Polkadot promised and how it did that was through this model called the relay chain and parachain they, they had a parachain and relay chain model so parachains are basically uh, the different blockchains that developers are building using uh, a toolkit uh, they call Substrate. So Polkadot offered a toolkit uh, for developers to build their own blockchain called Substrate. And by the way, Substrate is an absolute engineering marvel. And when an in a developer uses Substrate to build their own blockchain, that blockchain is called a parachain. Now that parachain connects to a relay chain. And the relay chain is basically what connects... Uh, these individual different parachains to one another, right? The relay chain also does another thing that's super cool that I thought at least, that is when a developer was building their own blockchain, right? One of the things Polkadot offered was shared security, meaning that like, if I wanna build my own project, I don't have to recruit validators, right? I don't have to recruit people to become like validators for my blockchain, right? Uh, by plugging into the relay chain, that parachain inherit all the validator network of Polkadot. So they basically get all the validators and the security that comes with it, right? So the shared security aspect was one of the key things that made Polkadot super attractive. Of course, the interoperability, different blockchains being able to talk to each other and transfer assets to one another, super cool. Everything is connected, no more silos, no more walled garden. And when I saw that, I was super impressed. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And you guys that's been following me for some time know I was a big fan of Polkadot. And everyone bought the hype as well, not just me, right? I think Polkadot at its peak had a token price of $55 and a market cap of $53 billion. $53 billion, guys. I mean, I looked at Polkadot's market cap this morning. It's at $4.2 billion. Four point, so it's all-time high went from... 53 billion to 4.2 billion. Oh my God, right? What happened? What happened? And this is what this episode is about. We're going to talk about why Polkadot didn't blow. Why didn't it pop? Just like I said in a past, caffeine AI wouldn't pop. Remember that? Polkadot is not popping and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. The first reason is because Polkadot right now feels like a blockchain hotel. Uh, you might be like, huh, what are you talking about? Like, let me explain. Um, for you to become a parachain on Polkadot, in the past, you have to go to an auction. And the reason why you have to go to an auction is because Polkadot can only host a limited number of parachain at once, right? Uh, there's a limitation on how many parachains Polkadot could host at once. Uh, and I believe that number was 100, but it's probably more now. Uh, but let's just go with 100 because that's the original number I saw when I was looking at Polkadot. 
So because there's a limited number of parachain Polkadot can host, projects must go through an auction. They must bid to become a parachain. And even if they do get the bid, the project must renew the lease every two years. And that was a disaster, right? Because if you're a project on Polkadot, right, that means every two years, you got you got to go through an auction again. So you're constantly campaigning. You're constantly trying to raise dots to win the next auction through crowd loans and bonding requirements. And you, you constantly got to maintain hype to maintain, to, to stay as a parachain on Polkadot rather than focusing on improving your product. So that model wasn't really working because like, a lot of projects felt like it was too much work to just stay on Polkadot. So Polkadot recently changed to what I saw called the Agile Core Time model. And Agile Core Time basically lets you rent time as a parachain. I believe the smallest time you could rent right now is 28 days. So for 28 days, you could be your own individual blockchain, a parachain on Polkadot, and enjoy all the benefits. Because clearly the, the, the auction model was a disaster, and I could have told them that way before. But... Even with the Agile core time model, you're still just like, you know, renting space. You're still like just, just renting a hotel room uh, as a parachain on Polkadot. Like compare that to Casper for an example. If I deploy street cred on Casper, that's a one and done thing, right? I could de deploy street cred on Casper and I'm permanently connected, right? And I would just be paying fees as transaction goes along, uh, as street cred transactions happen over and over to my application, right? So it's a one and done thing as opposed to if, if I were to deploy Cityscape as a parachain on Polkadot, like it's, it's more like a hotel situation, <laughs> right? So I feel like you're not really sovereign when your project comes on Polkadot, you're just like renting hotel time and that's not good. I think that's turning a lot of developers away. The second one is that Polkadot lost its monopoly on interoperability. I'm gonna see that one more time, it lost the monopoly on interoperability. And I saw that in real time. That was a real kill shot for Polkadot. Um, you know, what I mean by that is, remember Polkadot promised to connect other blockchains with one another so that they could communicate and share assets. But what ended up happening is that other blockchains saw Gavin Wood talk about that. By the way, Gavin Wood's a genius. I, I love the man, Gavin Wood's a genius. Other blockchains saw Gavin Wood talk about that and they just went and implemented their own solutions, right? They created bridges, right? There were also things like layer zeros that allow blockchains to communicate to one another. So layer zeros and bridges kind of made like the need for Polkadot kind of irrelevant, right? In fact, I remember um, uh, it was like maybe last year or two years ago, uh, I saw ICP come out with Chain Fusion, uh, which allows the ICP canisters to talk to other blockchains like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana. And when ICP did that, I immediately did, did a video called Polkadot is in trouble because I saw that Polkadot was losing its monopoly on interoperability. But the last one is the most important, right? The last one is the most important. That is jargon fatigue, man. Jargon fatigue. When Definity denied the grant, the influencer grant I had applied for, I was really upset because I felt like, you know, I deserved the grant. And, you know, you, you guys could disagree with that, but I was really upset. And that started pushing me away from Definity, and I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna be an ICP developer anymore. I'm gonna become a Polkadot developer. So I ran to Polkadot, <laughs> right? That was like the first chain I ran to. And as I'm going over their docs, guys, it was like, what the hell? It was just jargon after jargon after jargon after jargon. Now you guys know me. I often say that internet computer are a bunch of geeks with no EQ, no emotional quotient, high on IQ, no EQ. It's worse at Polkadot. Like, I, I was looking at the jargon, and I just walked away. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I can't, I can't do this. And jargon fatigue is a real problem because not only it pushes away normal developers like myself, but it prevents culture to form, right? It prevents cultural adoption because no regular person wants to deal with all this jargon. Like, we're just trying to prototype something and get something going, or we're just trying to get into a decentralized club, right? If you're just a normie, right? But all this jargon, you need to study so much just to understand how the, uh, the Polkadot ecosystem work that it ended up pushing a lot of people away. The culture never formed and developers like myself who are not geeky just, just walked away. And I think that's the number one problem Polkadot has. It has a cultural problem where the jargon is pushing me, people away. And Polkadot, if you're watching, you're welcome to hire me as a cultural consultant, right? Because like, you know, I could definitely help you with that. I, I grew up you know, dealing with nerds and, and, and studs my whole life. I was always the bridger. So 
you know, you're more than welcome to hire me as a cultural consultant because I do think the use case of building your own blockchain is still valid. And I have to say, again, Substrate is an engineering marvel. So I would love to work with the Polkadot team. I'm not trying to criticize them in any negative way. I'm just speaking as to why I think they're not picking up traction. And I hope all this makes sense to you. And I'll say it one more time. The first one is Polkadot now feels like a blockchain hotel. And I'm not sure a lot of developers are with that. The second one is they lost their monopoly on interoperability. And the third one is too much jargon, man. The geek speak is too much. You got to dial it back. But that's my opinion. Share your thoughts in the comment section. In any case, my misfits, you know what to do. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.